So for our um, closing message for this year, uh, God's Spirit directed me to Matthew chapter 11, which we've been referencing a lot already in this service. So I invite you, if you have Bibles with you, we're going to start at verse 25. And uh, I'll just read verse 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray one more time. Father God, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for this incredible invitation that Jesus gives us. And it's an invitation I know I've wrestled with a lot, and I know many of us have. And so we just pray, Father God, as our year um, draws to a close, as we look forward to turning the calendar to 2022, um, that you would teach us what it means to come and find our rest in you, and what it is the rest that you offer us. And so, Father God, I just pray that your spirit would be at work in our hearts and our minds and our imaginations to, to show us your vision. The, your possibilities for what rest is. And Father God, as your servant, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart would be pleasing in your sight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, it's just so intimate. So how are you doing? How are you doing? You don't have to answer out loud. Just think about it. It's a question I think we kind of ask ourselves. We take stock. We just tend to do that as human beings um, at the end of the year. Even though it's just a calendar flip, a flip of a page, it's something that we traditionally, I think, tend to do. We like to, to see how the year in review was. And the news stories now, sports stories, everything will be feel, filled with year in review stories. And we like to to look back and take stock at the year that was. I also like to look ahead to the year that is to come. And in the midst of all of that, that question just keeps coming up. How are you doing? How was your year? What are you hoping for for next year? Now, if you're anything like me, your year in review might look something like this. Wow, there was some good stuff. There was some definite joys. Definitely certain things to celebrate. Like Ethan figuring out that Baba Black Sheep and Twinkle Little Star are the same song. That for me was a milestone. Something to celebrate. A small joy to celebrate in this year. But if you're like me, there was also a lot of challenges. There was a lot of heaviness. And you come into the end of the year, as I mentioned to, to some people... I feel like I'm, I'm crawling to get to that calendar flip rather than sprinting. And I know many of you are like, you have a sabbatical to look forward to. And yes, I do. And still I find myself crawling. <laughs> and so in the midst of this, and, and I know I've heard from so many of you that you're tired. I'm tired. There's a weariness. There's a, a, a sense of heaviness as we close out this year and as um, we're not sure what the next Greek letter is going to bring us um, with all these variants. And just life is heavy. It's difficult. And it's burdensome. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus has these audacious words for us. Come. Come, all of you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. It's a bold promise, isn't it? 
And if you're like me, you're sitting here thinking this morning, okay, I've heard this a lot. But how? What does this mean? What does this look like? So we're going to examine a little bit this morning Jesus' gracious invitation to us, his bold and audacious invitation to us. And the first thing we're going to look at is, is the context in which Jesus makes this, this invitation. And it's a context, it's not warm and fuzzy at all. It's a context where he's rebuking the crowd, the gathered crowd. First, he calls them like spoiled children who have no idea what they really want, who will never be satisfied. He talks about John the Baptist, who, who came uh, in very austere and strange clothing, a, kind of like a funeral dirge, and, and, and they did not mourn. And then Jesus came, and he was partying and, and being with sinners and, and bringing all this new life and joy, and yet they did not rejoice. They just, they're like spoiled children. They couldn't be satisfied. And then in the next breath, Jesus talks about them needing to be like children <laughs> because they're now these proud adults who, who just have no clue who God is and what God is up to in their midst and, and no idea of what things should look like. And they, they've missed the very miracles that have been happening in their midst. And so um, in their childness, childishness and in their pride, they've completely missed out on what God is up to and doing in their midst. And for me, as I was thinking about Jesus' invitation directly after these rebukes, it just occurred to me that I think Matthew situated this invitation here perfectly. Because Matthew is inviting us to hear Jesus' rebuke first of all. And that is a rebuke to honesty. That is a rebuke to humility. That is a rebuke to find space for self-examination and self-reflection. Because if we don't do that, we'll never know that we are tired. We'll never know that we are wearied or burdened. No matter how self-aware we think we are. I experienced this uh, firsthand, and um, I want to thank Pastor Loretta, because she's here this morning. Um, I am blessed uh, to have uh, a ministry and partner, uh, partner in ministry, <laughs> those work, um, who is not afraid to speak the truth in love, and who's not, too af who's not afraid to ask the question, how are you doing? And not take fine for an answer. <laughs> so the question, I think, the first part of Jesus' invitation to come and find rest is to ask that question of ourselves. No, how are you doing? But no, no, really, how are you doing? Because when Pastor Loretta asked that of me and wouldn't let me get away with fine for an answer, all of a sudden... I realized a lot of things. All of a sudden, I was rebuked in the most gentle and loving way. And I realized that, oh my goodness, yes, I am tired. Yes, I do carry burdens that I did not know were there. And I'm not dealing all that great with them. And so I think that is part of God's gracious invitation to us this morning. Not in a, he's not inviting us in, a, in an angry or scornful way to say, no, no, you've got so many blind spots, you could never see what's coming. No, I think it's this loving and gracious invitation. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you burdened? How are you doing? No, really. How are you doing? And when we're able to, to find what we're carrying, then, then we're open, I think, to coming. Maybe. <laughs> and I say that because I know for some of us, when we, when we realize where we are at, 
It's like, okay, I got I to do something about this. And I know for myself, part of that was just giving myself permission to feel tired and permission to say that I am tired. But I know for, for others of us, it's like, wow, I've been carrying this for so long, I don't know what the next step is. I don't know if I can even come. And we'll talk about that later. But the first step in, in Jesus' gracious invitation for us to come and to find rest is to acknowledge that we are tired and that we are weary and that we are burdened. And then the next part of Jesus' in invitation is to, to come to him. And he says these interesting words, take my yoke upon you. Well, what does that mean? Take my yoke upon you. Um, the yoke was a very interesting um, image for Jesus to use. It's, it's a farming image. It's an agrar agrarian image. Um, and this is what it would look like. Oxen being yoked together to share the load, to walk step in step as they plowed the field, as they went about the work that was um, set before them. And Jesus invites us to be yoked together with him. It's a really interesting image. Thanks, Josh. And I think part of that invitation, and it is still has to do with the first point of, of self-examination, I know for me this, this has been something I've been really mulling on this week, is to, to, to realize that I have a yoke, that all of us have yokes. But who or what are we yoked to currently? So in your mind's imagination, I just want you to, if you feel comfortable, uh, close your eyes. And in prayer, invite Jesus to give you the eyes to see. And to turn, to turn over and to, and to see, Jesus, what am I yoked to? Who am I yoked to? And is that something that is heavy? And is that something that is dragging me down, pulling me behind it, and making every step I take forward that much more burdensome, that much more tiring? What do you see in your yoke there? For some of us, it might be the weight of expectation. That I'm supposed to be like this, that I should be doing this with my life, or expectations of the way the world should be. Christmas should have been like this. This is how things should be. And as, they, as expectations um, go unmet over and over again, with that just gets heavier. Or maybe it's fear. Fear that, that I'm not good enough. Fear that I, uh, I just don't have enough. That, that I, I can't feel secure. Those fears can drag us and weigh us down. Or honestly, maybe it's just the weight of the world. And that life is hard and life is difficult. And that is in our yoke and that is pulling us and dragging us back. Whatever it is this morning, friends, Jesus is inviting us to look and to acknowledge and name what is in that yoke. Why? So that we can release that to him. So that we can let go of that to him. And some of us might be saying, I don't even know how to do that. Jesus, help us. Would you help us? Would you help unyoke us? Because we can't take this off ourselves. Would you take this yoke off for us? Those things that are weighing us down. Those things that are dragging us down. Would you take that off? For us, please, because we can't in and of ourselves. And would you give us your yoke, Jesus, that we might be yoked to you? Because you promised, Jesus, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we're going to figure out what that means in just a moment. But can we be yoked to you, Jesus? And as you're praying that, as you're imagining that, 
Maybe you're wondering, like I have many times, how, how, how can I trust you, Jesus? How can I trust you that your yoke is indeed easy and light? And here's the truth, friends. That yoke that Jesus promise us, promises us is easy and light because he has indeed taken the weight of our heavy yoke upon himself. He has taken the weight of our sin. He has taken the weight of our shame. He has suffered in our place the death that we were owed when we rebelled against God and his plan and purpose. He took that on himself on the cross. And he defeated the power of sin and shame and death through his resurrection. And he's offering us now his life, his resurrection life. And it's in that resurrection life that we find this new yoke. A yoke which is easy and light. A yoke which gives life. If we will receive it. Friends, you hear me preaching the gospel each and every week. The fact that Jesus has taken our sin and our shame on himself. And given us his life in its place. And it's so important that that is in our hearts. That is in our minds. That is in our imaginations. Because without that, we'll never trust Jesus to be able to let go of our stuff and to take his life on. And so this morning, I just invite you, even if your eyes are still closed and you're still in this space of prayer with Jesus, Jesus, can I trust you? Can I trust you to have taken all of my stuff on yourself, on the cross? the consequences of my rebellion against you. Can you take all that from me? And can you give me your life and your lightness and your joy and your love? This ease that you promise. And it's there for us, friends, this morning. Jesus' promise is true. Friends, Jesus' invitation, though, goes far beyond just what we've been talking about. Just goes beyond just finding salvation and healing for our soul. Although that is central, that is key part of the gospel that I share each and every Sunday, it's also um, not the whole picture. Because God invites us into a new life, into a new way of living, of being. And that is part of living yoked to Jesus. That is part of his invitation to us, to find our lives yoked together with him. Because a yoke is not something you just sit around with, just hang out with. A yoke is something that you walk together with. And um, Dale Bruner, a uh, commentator, uh, excellent commentary on Matthew, has a really interesting observation about the yoked life. And I want to read it for you. And it comes from um, a book by John Mark Comer called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And he was quoting Bruner in this. And listen to his observations on what it means to live a yoked life. He says that, quote, a yoke is a work instrument Thus, when Jesus offers a yoke, he offers what we might think tired workers need least. They need a mattress or vacation, not a yoke. But Jesus realizes that the most restful gift he can give the tired is a new way to carry life, a fresh way to bear responsibilities. Realism sees that life is a, a succession of burdens. We cannot get away from them. Thus, instead of offering escape, Jesus offers equipment. Jesus means that obedience to his Sermon on the Mount, that's his yoke, his way of life, 
will develop in us a balance and a way of carrying life that will give more rest than the way we have been living. I like that. Jesus, instead of offering us an escape, offers us equipment. Because Jesus has made us to be a certain way. Jesus has designed us to be human. And being human has certain limitations with it. Being human has certain ways that we need to live in order to live well, to live in a state of thriving to live in a state of rest where we're not feeling burdened and exhausted all the time. And that's what I really believe when you look at the word, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The word easy there um, in the Greek, it's a really interesting word to translate. And every time I looked at it, it was translated a little bit differently throughout the New Testament. But I got the sense that it was um, meaning something that was well-suited that this is, this is well suited for you. This is how I've designed you to live. And the way I'm inviting you to live alongside me is in harmony, in ease with the way I've designed you. And so I've designed you to, to need to rest. And so why aren't you resting? Come, rest with me. I've designed you to be in community we can't do this life alone, this journey of faith alone. Come with me and come with each other. Something that April and I have been experimenting with and that we will put a lot of um, work into in our sabbatical is experimenting with Sabbath. And I know some of you have heard me talk about this a lot and preach a about this a lot. And, and I'm coming back to it because I can't escape it. Um, in Scripture, Sabbath is not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Why? Not because it's meant to be heavy and burdensome, but it's part of this light and easy yoke where Jesus is saying, I've designed you to rest. I've designed you to cease from working. I've designed you to cease from worrying about what other people think about you if you're productive enough, if you're working hard enough, if you're going to get all this done, if those emails don't get answered, what are people going to think about you? I've designed you to cease from all of that and rest in me. That, to me, is right there, the invitation to Sabbath. is one small picture of this invitation into Jesus' light and easy yoke. And friends, easy doesn't mean that Jesus is prom promising us easy street at all. Life will be difficult. But in the midst of that difficulty, in the midst of the weight and the burden, there is a way to live lightly and with ease, with Jesus. And it also doesn't mean this is just a call to be lazy or to find more leisure or whatever it is. The thing April and I have discovered with, with Sabbath is, man, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to rest. It takes a lot of work to prepare ahead of time so that you don't have to be working on that day and that you can enjoy each other and you can enjoy the pastries you've gotten from the Italian center the night before. And you can do all these things where you're with each other. But it takes work. It takes preparation. So, so Jesus' call to be yoked to him is not a call to laziness or leisure. But it's a call to live. To live with Jesus as he bears our burdens. To live with him in according to his way the way he's designed us to live and the way he's designed this world to be. And so I hope this morning that that's just a, a, a little bit of a tease, an invitation for you to consider. What am I yoked to? Who am I yoked to? How is Jesus offering to take that yoke off of me and to replace that with his yoke, which is easy and light? And how is Jesus offering to walk with me then in this new way of life. And it will change things. It will upset the status quo. But if you're like me, the status quo is not good enough. <laughs> it needs to change. Because I'm too tired to keep going the way I am. And so I'm going to end this message this morning 
with uh, just some, a few more observations from John Mark Comer. And he says this, The best the world can offer is a temporary distraction to delay the inevitable or deny the inescapable. That's why Jesus doesn't offer us an escape. He offers us something far better, equipment. He offers his apprentices a whole new way to bear the weight of our humanity with ease at his side. Like two oxen in a field tied shoulder to shoulder with Jesus doing all of the heavy lifting at his pace. Slow, unhurried, present to the moment, full of love and joy and peace. An easy life isn't an option. An easy yoke is. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this incredible invitation to come to you, to, to first of all acknowledge that we are tired, that we are disappointed, disillusioned, carrying things with us. And we find your gracious invitation to come and find rest in you. But Father God, we also acknowledge that for some of us, coming to you might even seem to be too much right now. And so, Father God, I, on behalf of those people, as, as a friend, uh, just go back to that image in Scripture of, of the paralytic on the mat who wanted to get to see Jesus, and yet there were crowds so far in front that he couldn't. And so his friends picked him up on his mat and carried him. And they climbed onto the roof of the house that you were in, Jesus. And they cut a hole in there and they lowered their friend down to you so that he might be with you. And I, I feel like you're inviting us to pray on behalf of those who this morning feel like they just can't even come. And so we, as their community, do that. We pray them into your presence, knowing that you come and meet us as well where we are. And so, Father God, in your presence, we pray, as we have been praying already this, this morning, to reveal our hearts to us, to show us what it is that is weighing us down, what we are yoked to. And we thank you that you replace that yoke with your light and easy yoke. And we pray, Father God, that you would give us the courage now to walk in step with you at your pace, at your rhythm, in your way, and we thank you that you are doing all of the heavy lifting beside us. And yet you graciously invite us to walk with you. And I pray for the courage to make the changes you're calling us to make. So that we might live in your rest. That we might find tangible and practical ways to, to live in your rest. And to invite others into that. Father God, that this not be need be some mere theoretical thing that we think about or pray about, um, a, a spiritual distance um, idea. But Father God, that it's something tangible and real that you're inviting us into this very morning as we look forward to the year that you have ahead for us. And so we pray that your spirit would challenge us as individuals, but as communities, I pray for our house churches that they would catch a vision for the ways in which you are inviting us to live and walk alongside you and one another. I pray for our church as a whole that we would catch your vision for what it means to live in your rest and to invite others to the same. And so, Father God, we thank you that you are with us. And on this day after Christmas, we can celebrate that you are indeed with us and that you are inviting us into this amazing and transformative life with you. And so help us walk it with you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite Sarah forward and she